Hey what is up guys and welcome back to Predatory Exotics. We are stepping it up in tank sizes again and today we're going to be covering the medium low and the medium wide tank. Uh, these ones are from Exoterra but you can also get ones from Zoomed and other brands. We've just got the Exoterra ones here today. We're going to be covering all the different reptiles and amphibians that you can get inside these tanks. We're going to be going through the low first. This is because you can get more of your terrestrial species. And then they can be also kept in this one, but this one you have the extra 15 centimetres of height. So you can have some semi-arboreal or some arboreal species in that one. So let's kick this off with the stuff that you can get inside the low terrarium. A great group of geckos that we personally keep is the Stenodactylus. We keep the Stenodactylus Stenodactylus. There's tons of different species of these dwarf sand geckos and you can get a nice group of sort of five or six geckos inside a 60 wide terrarium. This gives them loads of ground space, especially if you put levels on the back or the side of the terrarium. Loads of space for them to climb, hide, loads of different hiding spots. It'd be great to have a colony and hopefully we upgrade ours from our 45 cube into this 60 base one so they have more room to roam about. And another one that you could get a large group of is viper geckos. Obviously we've covered them in previous videos in smaller tanks where you can get a few in. This one again you could get sort of four or five inside here comfortably. Uh, have a nice group of maybe one or two males and the rest females. This would be a great enclosure and hopefully a species we'll get in the future. Some of the more obscure sort of micro dwarf geckos you can get in here. You can actually get the Diplodactus geckos from Australia. These are a really funky species that don't get seen a lot in the hobby and something we'd like to add to our collection, but it's not something we've seen in shops at the moment. And another species of sand gecko is the Tropiocolotes, genus of sand geckos. These are really skinny sort of geckos. Another species of sand gecko that I really like, obviously. These are a lot of dwarf geckos that you can get large colonies of. Um, you could fit them in smaller tanks if you only wanted a couple, but these do well in colonies, so you can have a nice group inside this tank. As well as that gecko, another one is the Namib web-footed gecko. Um, something super cool with the webbed feet so they can walk on sand and stuff like that. Sand is an okay substrate for these ones. They are designed because they're webbed feet to go through the sand. Something we hopefully add to our collection in the future. So moving on from your groups of geckos to the pairs of geckos. We have mentioned these in some of our smaller tank ones. But the knobtail geckos, even the larger species of knobtail gecko would go great in here. You'd get a nice pair. They'd have room to hide from each other if they wanted to but you could also have that breeding pair in this tank. And a similar one to your knobtail geckos is barking geckos, something we've been looking at for a while and we're deciding if we want to get barking geckos and knobtail geckos, but barking gecko is a really interesting species and you get a pair nicely in this tank. And another one that you could get a pair inside this enclosure is banded geckos. There's a few different species, mostly from North and Central America. Um, these would go great inside this tank. They've also got the Western Banded Gecko, Central Banded Gecko. There's tons of different ones. Sort of like a smaller leopard gecko species. So if you don't want the size of a leopard gecko, but something of a similar appearance, Banded Geckos are going to be the one to go with. And a couple of the geckos that you can keep singly in this tank. The Wonder Gecko, also known as the Frog-Eyed Gecko. You've got the Roborowski Gecko. There's a few different species. Um, a really impressive one, almost fish-like scales. Um, I'd like to find some, I can only find single ones. I'd like to get a male and a female, not necessarily in the same tank. Some of them can get quite large, but something that would go great inside this tank in a nice desert setup. And your ocelot gecko, also known as the Pictus gecko, is a species from Madagascar, a Madagascar ground gecko, that would go nice inside this tank. You do have to keep them singly though, males will fight, and if you put a male and female together all the time, he will overbreed that female. Um, so just keep one in this size enclosure. So moving on from geckos to skinks, we have another 60 that's filled and it's full with wedge-snouted skinks. We keep four adults and we successfully bred them inside this enclosure and got four nice little babies from it. So clearly this is a great size tank for your wedge-snouted skinks. And a species of skink that's in the same genus as the wedge-snouted skink is the oscillated skink. These are slightly larger and they have bigger limbs, so they're more adept to being on top of the substrate rather than underneath it. But you can get one inside this enclosure. If you wanted multiple, you would have to upgrade the tank size. But they're a really cool species, but maybe not as cool as the wedge-snouted skinks. And another sort of fossorial species that we'd like to keep in the future is the sandfish skink. 
These are really cool with their shovel noses and they'll bury throughout the sand and then pop up just like the wedge-snouted skink when they want to eat. In terms of snakes, you can get a lot of fossorial or terrestrial snake species inside this enclosure. My personal favourite would obviously be the sand boas. You can get your Kenyan sand boas, javelin sand boas, Arabian sand boas, and then probably my personal favourite, the rough scale sand boa. These would go great inside this enclosure, as even a female, which are bigger than males, will reach a max size of two feet. A similar size species is your hognose. So you've got the very popular western hognose, but there's also the eastern hognose that you can get. And then something we really want inside our collection is the tricolour hognose. These actually have the colours of like a milk or coral snake, uh, very different to the western hognose. Super bright colours and something we really want to get in the future. So let's move on from your reptiles to your terrestrial amphibian species. Obviously this is great for your fat frogs. You've obviously got your common Pac-Man frog. These would go great inside. Even the largest Pac-Man would go great inside here. There's a few different species, including the Argentine horn frog, which gets slightly larger and they would do perfectly as they're sit and wait predators in the bottom of this enclosure. And then ones we've talked about before include the tomato frog and the false tomato frog, as well as the Asian chubby frog. They're sit and wait predators and these are slightly smaller than your Pac-Man and they have smaller mouths. You might even be able to get two in an enclosure this size. You've also got the green toad. They've got a really cool pattern and obviously those green spots found throughout Europe, North Africa and parts of the Middle East. They'd go great inside this enclosure, but if you did want multiple, you might need to get a bigger enclosure. A frog that I really like is the Malaysian leaf frog. These are so well camouflaged, and if you put it inside a naturalistic bioactive enclosure with lots of dead leaves, they're going to blend in perfectly, and you're going to have to point it out to anyone that comes to visit your collection. Another common species that you could get multiple of inside this enclosure would be your fire belly and your yellow belly toads. These are awesome little frog species, very active, you could do a half water, half land section inside this enclosure and they're always going to be moving about. It's going to be a nice display species to watch hop around the tank. Some baby amphibians that you could get inside this tank would be your cane toad. Obviously these are going to get really big so you are going to have to upgrade it to a bigger tank in the future. But babies and juveniles would go great inside this enclosure. That's the same for your pixie frog, also known as the giant African bullfrog. You could happily keep the babies and juveniles inside this enclosure but the males get up to two and a half kilograms, so you're gonna to have to upgrade it to a 90 long enclosure in the future. And in terms of other amphibians, you've got your salamanders. Fire salamanders are a great species that we'd like to keep. From Europe, so you don't need to keep them that hot, you can use a heat mat rather than a heat bulb, but there's tons of different localities with varied amounts of yellow and black and some red spotting that makes them really unique. The tiger salamander is a larger species this is the first time we can get a tiger salamander in one of the enclosures we've looked at. They'd go great inside here. Again, a very cool species. You keep it with a large water section and they'll go in the damp substrate as well as the damp moss that you provide in a nice naturalistic enclosure. And one native to North America that we don't see a lot often here in the UK is the spotted salamander. They obviously have this dark colour with these sort of blue or white spots. Something really cool and a little bit more different to the European fire salamander. Moving on from salamanders to newts is your marbled newt. This is a European alpine species with incredible green and black coloration and a nice orange stripe. A really unique species and I'd love to get a bioactive setup inside this enclosure for that species. So let's move on from the low to the wide terrarium. Obviously you can get everything that I said inside this low enclosure in the wide one but it's going to provide more space inside this enclosure. So some of the more terrestrial or fossorial species that I mentioned for this one, obviously they might just be better suited to this one as they're never going to use that arboreal space, but most of them would definitely be okay moving from this one to this one to give them a little bit more room. So this is the first time we can mention some of our larger terrestrial gecko species, such as the leopard gecko. These would go great inside this enclosure. Obviously if you have a particularly large one, you might need to upgrade it to a two and a half or a three foot tank. Obviously Exoterra don't make the two and a half foot, so you would have to upgrade it to a three foot. But as long as you put enough terracing inside this enclosure, they'll utilise much more space than just the ground level, and they'd go great inside here. Not only have you got your normal leopard gecko, you've got different subspecies, including the Montanus leopard gecko, something we've seen in our local pet shop and something we might consider in the future. And if you didn't just want a leopard gecko, the East Indian leopard gecko is a completely different species, it's found obviously in East India rather than the Pakistan of the leopard gecko. 
These are more humid species, so you will need to mist it and keep that humidity up a bit more, but a great species nonetheless. And a similar humidity animal would be the African fattail. These are a super cool species, rising in popularity, with so many morphs coming out, including the Oreo and the Patternless, the Stripe and the Skunk line. I'd love to get these species, but they are a little bit more humid and possibly look to breed in them in the future. And another genus of geckos is the Critodactylus genus that we've mentioned before. There's so many different ones, including the bent-toed gecko, slender-toed gecko, the Gunther's Indian gecko, as well as my favourite, the Sri Lankan spotted gecko, that looks like a night sky on a gecko and would go great. You could get two or maybe even three inside this enclosure and have a nice breeding pair. Another gecko that I think is rising in popularity would be the Chinese cave gecko. These black geckos with their yellow bands are super unique and a really cool display species. But that isn't just the Chinese cave gecko, you've also got the Japanese cave gecko. They've got the red eyes and the orange bands as opposed to the yellow. A nice humid cool setup for this species. Put that terrace in like I've said before and you give them so much room inside this enclosure, they'll do perfect. Now some of the previous geckos that we've mentioned for the smaller tanks would also go great in here. They'll use that arboreal space, so the binos gecko from Australia, it's a parthenogenic species so you don't need to keep more than one but you could keep two or three inside this enclosure, give them loads of room as they are semi-arboreal. Put loads of dried twigs and sticks and stuff, it'll be like their natural range in Australia. A similar setup would be your golden-tailed gecko. These are a really cool species, a little bit more expensive, but their color varies really nicely. You can get very different greens and browns with the yellow, sort of the orange tail. Something I'd like to keep, and this size enclosure would allow you to get a nice breeding group in it. And then some of the more tropical ones, your gold dust day geckos. Obviously you can keep a variety of the smaller different day geckos in here, but gold dust day geckos do well in a little group. So you'd get a nice group of three or four, whereas you usually keep them in pairs. A group would go great in here. A nice bioactive setup with loads of plants, give them loads of space to hide. Feed them on your rapashi with also a few insects. They'll do great inside this enclosure. Something that's harder to get and a little bit more expensive will be your Bowers Chameleon Gecko. We've seen them available a few times and seen a few people keep them. You can get a nice setup in here, keep a group and hopefully breed them inside this enclosure. As the smaller enclosures would only let you get one or two, this one you could keep three or four comfortably. Going back to the skinks, a nice semi-arboreal species would be your long-tailed grass skink. These have that super long tail that is three times the length of their body and they'll climb up the sides as long as you put nice little rock crevices and stuff and they'll go great inside this enclosure and you'll spot them with that massive tail. The bronze skink is another smaller species that you could keep inside this enclosure. Semi-arboreal so they'll climb up as well as using the ground space provided and they're a very active species so you'll see them climbing around the tank and you'll be able to watch them all day long. One of Ollie's favourites is actually the red-eyed croc skink. These are a really unique dragon-like species. Keep them nice and cool and they'll also live in family groups so you could get a couple inside this enclosure, hopefully breed them and they live with their young. It's really unique for reptiles to actually care for their young but these species will do it and it'd be really interesting to watch if you did a nice bioactive enclosure. But not only do you have the red-eyed croc skink, there's also the muddy-eyed croc skink a lesser known species, probably because people prefer that nice orange eye on the red croc skink, but the muddy croc skink has that dragon-like appearance that would look awesome in here. Another awesome but really sensitive species that you could keep would be the pygmy chameleons. These are obviously one of the smaller chameleon species that have to be kept in a bioactive setup as they're very shy and they like that dense planted setup. Again, sensitive to temperature and they don't live that long, only sort of a year, year and a half. So you want to get a few so that they can breed and you can produce more and keep your colony going so you've got a nice tank set up for a few years to come. Before we get to those arboreal frog species, one of the cool ones that will live on the ground as well as sort of semi-arboreal would be your dart frogs. Tons of different ones, there's Azorius, Powder Blue, Citronella, there's tons of different ones. Look them all up and see which one you like the best but they'd go great two or three inside this enclosure. They'll roam about the bottom and climb up a little bit but if you wanted something that's going to climb up a little bit more, the Dendrobates leucomelus would also be a great species. These are also known as the bumblebee dart frogs. They'll use the space arboreally a lot more. So again, make sure it's that bioactive enclosure so they can climb all around. And don't forget the Dendrobates erratus. These are the green and black ones. Ollie's personal favourite for the dart frogs. Something I think he wants to get in the future. And again, you always want to put your dart frogs in that bioactive setup. Nice naturalistic 
self-maintaining environment, just chuck in them fruit flies and they'll be nice and happy and healthy. So we mentioned before the glass frogs. These are a see-through frog species that are nice and arboreal, so they'll go all around the glass inside the terrarium. And when they are on that glass, you'll be able to see through under their belly, see all their organs inside. Some people might think it's a bit weird, but we love it here at Predatory Exotics. Your clown and your giraffe frogs are a really cool species, similar looking, but they're a small tree frog species that would go great in here. Two, three or four would go great in here. So they're not going to get that big. We've mentioned them in some of the smaller tanks. So with this bigger tank, you'd be able to keep a bigger group. One that you could keep with an entirely water bottom setup would be your reed frogs. As their name suggests, they're going to live on the reeds on the riverbanks, so they're going to be suspended over water for their most of their lives. This is why you can keep it in a fully aquatic setup on the bottom, with lots of foliage coming out, cork bark, stuff like that. Now happily sit on the reeds chirping, and it'll be a really cool unique setup to show people when they come around. But my personal favourite kind of tree frog that you'd keep in here would be your South American bird poo frogs. These look like lichen or bird poo as their name suggests and they'll stick to the cork bark inside this enclosure. Be completely camouflaged, you'll have to point them out to people when they come and look inside the tank. But a really cool species and the camouflage is impeccable. So we mentioned in the low some of the more terrestrial species of snake that you could get inside that enclosure. But this enclosure you can start to get some of the larger snakes inside. So your colubrid snakes would do great in here. You can get your standard corn snake. Obviously, if you have a very large one, you might want to upgrade it in the future. But you can get small ones in here, definitely. An ever popular pet with most people. Another popular one would be your California king snake. This is probably the second option after the corn snake for one of the most popular colubrid snakes. They do great inside here. Again, if they get to that five foot range, you might want to upgrade the tank to a three foot long tank but even small ones or juveniles would go great inside this enclosure. If you didn't want a California king snake, the grey banded king snake is one of my personal favourites. The grey and orange bands on this snake are so beautiful, something I'd love to keep in the future, as well as the variable king snake. I love these snakes because when you breed them, you don't know what's going to come out. There's so many different colour and pattern variations. They range from yellows to reds to creams, even greys. We'd love to keep a few different variable king snakes as they're so different and they look like different species. And don't forget about your Asian rat snakes. You've got your Thai bamboo as well as your Chinese bamboo rat snakes. An awesome red colour with black bands or stripes down the back. You can get the banded one or the striped one. They're both a beautiful snake and something I'd love to keep. But you do have to remember a cool human setup is what this species likes. And another one would be your mandarin rat snake. These are super cool, grey and black colour with that beautiful orange on them. An awesome pattern as well, so they'd be a great display species and something really unique to add to your collection. A common species but has loads of different subspecies would be your garter snake. These are great because there's so many different subspecies and they all have different colours and patterns. Varying amounts of blue and red on this snake with tons of different checkered patterns. The unique thing about this one is you don't have to feed on mice, you can actually feed them fish they'll eat frogs, fish and lizards in their native geographic range. A snake that I'd love to keep as it is a little bit more arboreal would be your smooth green snake. A super active species that isn't going to feed on your mice and stuff like that. It's actually going to feed on crickets and locusts. They are insect eaters so it's great for someone that doesn't like mice as they can feed those insects and they're very active. So a nice arboreal bioactive setup would allow them to climb around and they are going to need UVB, so you're going to have to put that lighting on top of the enclosure, but a really nice setup with an amazing snake to put into it. And a lesser known species that I really like but isn't very popular is the viper boa. This is a ground dwelling boa that can get really chunky, almost like a blood python, but they're going to be a smaller body, so you can fit it inside this tank nicely, possibly even the low one, because they are a ground dwelling boa, so you might not necessarily need this height, but a great boa all the less. So this video does have a ton of different species. Obviously these tanks step up the size so you can get a ton more different species inside them. But there will be a ton more species that you can keep. My list isn't an extensive list of everything you can keep. There will be tons of species that you can keep inside this tank. And as we go through the larger tanks in this series, there's going to be more and more species that you can keep in them. So I hope this video has given you loads of different ideas. If you do have this medium low or the medium wide tank, if you do have one at home, leave a comment down below what you keep in it, or if you have an empty one, what are you going to put into it? I hope this has given you a few ideas. Please leave a like down below, comment that comment down below, as well as subscribing to this channel and following us on Instagram and TikTok for all the updates on all the different animals we keep in our collection. 
and what we plan on filling these two tanks with. So again, I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.